So Intel just released a new CPU, and it's kind of weird. Let's talk about why right now on Robitech. Welcome to the official launch of Rocket Lake, probably the weirdest CPU that I have had the privilege of being a part of when we come to launch. Follow along with me for a second. I wanna talk about why this is strange, but at the same time, strategically, it makes some sense. Now understand, there's been a lot of changes at Intel. In fact, their CEO has since stepped down or been fired. They have a new person in charge. AMD is leading and honestly, just making waves both in the GPU market and the CPU market and we are seeing a new Intel start to react to this. Now here's the thing, 10th gen, when we compare 10th gen to Ryzen 5000 series, we are seeing a pretty massive gap between those two. And we knew Rocket Lake was coming, but the other thing too is we also knew it was on a re-architected, uh, re-architected but yet same uh, nanometer process that we had had in the past. So we weren't expecting a ton out of this, but the other thing too is when you think about what Intel really needs to do, given the current global climate, we understand that there, there's room here to do something unique. And I feel like that's what potentially Intel has done with the release of Rocket Lake. With the current human malware situation right now, trying like go to, go to Newegg, try and buy a Ryzen 5000 series. Honestly, you just can't outside of maybe a 5600X. But when you're talking about wanting to be a gamer and get a 5800X, a 59, or even a 5950, you're paying scalping prices. And honestly, when you look at 10th gen Intel, they just don't compete. So when you look at that and the fact that we now have the rumored Alder Lake releasing in November and potentially matching the release schedule for AMD moving forward, it does make some sense why we'd have a CPU like this that may come out because Honestly, TLDR, we have a CPU that for gamers is close, not better, but close to the current AMD Ryzen 5000 series. And right now, let's go into jump in and talk about why, because we ran a bunch of benchmarks and we wanna show you why we're coming to these conclusions. But in the end, I don't know if this is a bad thing, and this is the conclusions you're gonna to have to make after we finish our full review. But to start, let's go and kick off and talk about how we tested and what we tested for our CPU benchmarks. We're gonna to have to eventually do a video on our testing methodologies. We're still developing our stuff. And again, we are young, we are learning, and we are apt to make mistakes. We feel very confident in some of these things. And in fact, we'll talk a little bit later on when we get a little further on our testing methodologies about some things we do when we see stuff like what we saw with this particular testing. Uh, for our testing environments, we had an Intel environment and we had an AMD environment. Our Intel environment was all, both Intel and AMD were both run on Praxis test benches. Uh, both of them were using Asus ROG uh, Strix gaming uh, motherboards. We used a Z590E for the uh, Intel environment and we used a B550E for the AMD environment. Again, we're looking for very similar motherboards. We did a lot of research to make sure that we were using the same both brand and at the same time, same capabilities for our, for our motherboards. Both use the G-Skill Ripjaw V3600 16 memory at 16, 19, 19, 39. Both use WD SN750 um, NVMe SSDs, uh, both a 250 gig for a Windows drive and a one terabit byte for our game and application drives. Uh, both used Corsair AX1000 power supplies or at least a thousand watt power supplies, actually the, uh, and then uh, both used NZXT Kraken X73 RGB AIOs. We kept our environments as much as possible, the same between the two. We also checked all the BIOS settings, making sure that no uh, overclocking was set and all that sort of stuff. Again, we'll do a much more in-depth video on our testing environments later on, but for the most part, we wanted to at least set the precedent to say that we did our research and took our time to make sure we tested this. For the games we tested, we tested Civilization VI, again, a very CPU bound, uh, um, we, a very CPU bound and CPU heavy title. We tested F1 2020, Total Wars 3 Kingdom Borderlands, which actually was AMD, AMD heavy. Um, and then also Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which allowed us to basically, again, nice matter your game, everything had uh, benchmarks uh, in it. So we can make sure that we were getting very similar runs. Again, we'd run three times and then we take the uh, mean time average for each of these individual parts. For our CPU benchmarks, we ran Cinebench, uh, CPU-Z, Geekbench 5, Novabench, Ada64, and of course, Blender, each with each of their individual products. I will say this, we feel very confident in our game testing and what we got from our game results, but we saw a lot of weirdness that kind of Steve alluded to a little bit in his, in his uh, review. Uh, though we had early access to our 11900K, 
One of the things that we did not get is the full press uh, stuff from Intel. So we did reach out to Intel. They did respond when we looked at our data. So we're gonna gloss over very lightly what we did in productivity because right now I'll just, I'll be transparent. The productivity was terrible for the 11900K. We asked these questions to Intel. Um, we were very specific. We're actually showing you these questions right here, the, the, the email that we drafted to Kevin. They are working on responses. And uh, should we see a change in that information, we will update our review uh, with a new one to basically uh, show that stuff off. But given what we have been able to test now with the information we were given, these are the results we had. We just wanna set that precedent and again, be very transparent about when we see weird things, we, work, we try to work with the companies to find out where this was. We did this with the Intel 670P uh, NVMe SSD review. Intel did respond, we got a lot of answers. And in fact, it actually changed how we, our perspective in terms of how the 670P did once we understood it. But we are having similar issues here with this CPU. And I guess we just wanna be, we just wanna position this correctly. Now I'm, not, I'm, I'm fairly confident, just given what we've seen, that we're not gonna see anybody, whether that's uh, Linus or Jay or Bitwit or Paul, or even the, fi the fine folks over at Hardware Unboxed or uh, Gamers Nexus who are gonna recommend uh, the 11900K as a productivity CPU over Ryzen 5000 series. I'm pretty sure that's not gonna be a case, but the thing is, is there are things like microcode updates that could be in BIOSes and certain uh, chipset updates that could have been given to press that may have changed their performance in certain cases that won't see as much of a boost in games, but would see a bigger boost in productivity apps. I know that was a lot of dissertation right there, but that was really important for us to make sure that we set clear before we talked about the results that we did for gaming and productivity. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into gaming uh, and talk a little bit about uh, what we saw from the overall stuff. Now, while I'm talking here, uh, you're gonna start seeing charts showing up. We're gonna just talk over the charts. Uh, just to, we're, again, we're not gamers nexus, guys. We're not gonna sit there and do an in-depth and like walk through these bit by bit. Again, we're gonna give you the data. We're gonna talk about our conclusions while we're showing you the data. And then at the end, just basically overall wrap it up. So here, while we're throwing through this, for 1080p gaming, we showed performance improvements over both Intel, the 10900K, and the 10850. Uh, the improvements in a couple scenarios, very large, but does not in any circumstance overtake the 5800X, 5900X, or 5950X. 5800X is actually pretty important to point out here because the core and thread count is very similar to the 5800X. Uh, specifically in Civilization, we noticed the turn time and performance in Civ 6 um, does show equal performance to the same processor, single core usage for calculations. We're not sure. Overall, the 10900K shows an average of a 7.2% improvement over the 10900K and the 10850 for 1080p gaming performance. Again, over margin of error. Uh, relative to 1440p game performance, the data shows that the 11900K hitting the same GPU bound state that the 5800X, the 5900X, and 5950X encountered. Neither the 10900K and the 10850K hit the same GPU bound state. This is just telling you that overall we now see the improvement with the 11900K basically pushing these games to the point where they can become GPU bound and not CPU bound. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the exception in that game is not GPU bound at 1440p with the 3090 we used for testing. Uh, the Intel 11900K overall is a legitimate option for gamers. It may not equal the performance of the competing processors and displays a market improvement over the current Intel 10900K and the 10850 as an option. Now let's go and just quickly now again, we're gonna show you a little bit of data on the CPU benchmarks, but again, you have to take some of this stuff with a grain of salt. We think this is a little bit weird. We're not saying that what, there could be, and Kevin believes this, there could be certain things that could come out from a microcode update, depending on things like single core performance or even how it does distributed things across threads that could actually boost performance quite significantly. And that's why we use this with the game of grain of salt. I will say this again, if you're looking for a productivity CPU, I feel like Ryzen 5000 series very clearly is the winner here. But again, I still wanna go through our findings because we took the time to test it and we still wanna show that data. For the Intel 11900K, it exhibits single core processor greater than all the processors evaluated. So in other words, even across the 5000 series, single core performance on this thing was king. Single thread results also showed improvements over the 10900K and the 10850K and still had a gap in performance against the AMD processors. The 11900K is an eight core 16 thread and could not compete against the 5900X or the 5950X in performance due to the sheer quantity of core and threads, obviously. But against the 5800X, the 11900K, it actually ended up coming to about equal. 
There are discrepancies in the multi-core, multi-thread performance against the 10900K and 10850K processors that raise questions regarding the overall 11900K CPU benchmark performance. While the core thread counts can speak to a part of the discrepancy, it cannot account for all of it. Due to this, until questions are answered by Intel, it's unclear if our CPU benchmark results are showing the 11900K its true performance. If they are accurate, then the 11900K does not represent an alternative for productivity need versus the 10900K or 10850, let alone any of the AMD CPUs that we tested. If the data is inaccurate, then the 11900K could potentially represent an alternative to the 10th gen CPUs. While we don't believe it would be equal to Ryzen processors, how much accurate results show improvement for Intel would determine if it's a viable option for productivity or not. So guys, that's all the data. So let's boil it down. We've given you a lot of information, but I want to simplify it. Here's the simple answer. In today's world, in today's environment, where we have shortages, what we need is alternatives for competitive purposes between just AMD. If we can only use CPUs from a single manufacturer and those CPUs are out of stock, then what we get with the option of the 11900K for gamers only is a potential solution in which you as a gamer would not notice a significant difference in terms of gaming at 1080p and at 1440p. At 4K, this doesn't matter. Your CPU doesn't matter near as much. In that case, one of the things that I appreciate about the 11900K, and there's a couple things. One, Intel is still king in terms of overall compatibility. You still have better options in terms of RAM compatibility, specifically in terms of XMP and everything that comes from that. There's just a sheer num sheer larger amount in terms of both speed and compatibility. You have Z590, which is a brand new board, which gets you Wi-Fi 6, all of that stuff, and is just more in stock. And then the other thing too is that you actually do have the option of potentially purchasing this. Though at launch, we know for sure because they sold out during pre-order that you aren't gonna be able to get one right out of the gate. All that being said, this is a weird CPU. It's weird because for the first time we didn't have Intel leapfrog AMD and then AMD leapfrog Intel, which is what we have seen historically. But what we do see, and this is where I think strategically we may have a change for the first time, is where an Intel as a manufacturer said, look, we see a potential to give consumers another option specifically around gaming where they can pick up a CPU because they may not be able to get an AMD one and it be good enough for you to be able to use for those of you who really need a CPU right now. Now, if Alder Lake really is launching in November, all of this could be you. Just like Jay, I think the right thing to say right now is given the current climate, if you can wait, you should wait because CPUs are too expensive, GPUs are too expensive, RAM is too expensive, power supplies are about to go out of stock. You guys, it is the worst time to try and build new PCs right now. But if you can't wait, and I know many of us can't, if you can't wait, what I can say is that if you are a gamer and you can't get a 5900X and you can't get a 5800X, then you can pick up an 11900K. And if Intel is super smart and they price this correctly, then this could be a viable opportunity, a, a viable option for you. But if you are into productivity right now, this doesn't even make sense against the current 10th gen. And unless our results change with some, some information we get from Intel, we just can't recommend it for anything but gaming. All that being said, everything that we just said, that's just where things lie with Intel right now. Well guys, that's it. That's our review. We hope that our transparency was appreciated. Again, we always wanna be super clear. If we see something where we wanna let you know that when we show the data, that there could be potential issues there. But for the most part, this is where I think things sit. So I'd love to know down in the comments below, did you find this review helpful? Given what we've shown you, do you feel like you would actually go and pick up an Intel CPU? Let us know all that stuff down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, ring that notification bell, and get ready for awesome every time we release a video. Ow, that made my head hurt. Also, check out our live show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, we'd love to just have you. It's a really great time. We're gonna start playing some games and all sorts of stuff like that as well. Anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one.